Hi, welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, huh, you've been warned. So look, look, here come three, look, look, two, look, look, one, bang. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bang, greatest show in the daggone multiverse. And we have a great show for you today. Bah! Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Got a great one. <laughs> Greater than it would have been. I know it's late. It's late. It's late. I know. It's not even Thursday anymore. It's Friday already. But look! You know how it goes. You know how it be. I get to watch that NFL football. Be living a dream. Be living a dream. Look, look. I was in no condition to do it after the game. But here I am now. Don't worry, brothers and sisters. Five shows a week. That's what CB... Cryptocurrency Blockchain News will produce five shows a week. I don't know when those shows will come. But bang, you get them. Don't worry, you'll get your full portion. We have a great show for you today. We have a good portion to serve you right now. Yes. Look, look, Cardano. Lovers. Look. <laughs> Cardano Beef Chain. Tested in Wyoming. Here we come. Here we come now, Cardano. C and C, nice American years. Anyway, we'll get there when we get there. We'll get to yapping when we get to yapping when we get there when we get there. <laughs> and then look, look, Pakistan, mulling legal legal crypto framework. Bang, Pakistan. It's actually pronounced Pakistan. All right. So for you Americans, I'll just say it your way. Pakistan. <laughs> and then finally, oh yes, and this is the juice. One of China's biggest banks are selling bonds, and guess what they're allowing you to buy them with? Bitcoin. Now, that has many implications. That has many, many implications, so stick around to that portion. We got some yap yapping to yap yap about. Bah! All right, until then, though, let's proceed how we proceed. Boom. <laughs> let's get her done. Look, look, let's move on. All right. We got here, we got here. We got a little bit of boom. A little bit of year. Usual. All right. Let's see what we're working with. Uh, uh, some Bitcoin, what are we talking about? 16253 Look, look, the price of Bitcoin. $16,253. Bye. And when I left you yesterday, we were only at 15000 $646, so we've gone up. What is that? <laughs> yep. Uh, we've gone up 600 and, oh, about 610 bu or 13 bucks or something like this. Look, 600 and something change. You see, you see, you see, that's why I got the fucking Bitcoin last week, right? So, right, because I want to buy my, my small caps with it later. And that's what I mean. If I had just left that 8000 so I bought 8000 bucks worth of Bitcoin last week, right? I guess it was 0. 0.6 or a bit of a Bitcoin or whatever it equaled. Right? If I just left that 8000 in my bank, well, it would still just be 8000 But that 8000 has already turned into, I think, 8000 I think I'm up 600 bucks already, right? You see? So... By sort of using Bitcoin as, you know, store of value, what I always talk to you guys about, store of value. Store your value in it, and as it grows, now you have more purchasing power later down the road, right? All right, anyways. Oh, and so and so I wanted to congratulate Sloppy and DP Entertainment, who've uh, also liquidated a few positions and got their Bitcoin I got some Bitcoin and stuff. Yeah, right? You see, it's instant money, right? You see my, our V-chains and chain link and shit? It, it's sitting there. So better to get some Bitcoin. As that rises, you know, it's like a two-track. Here's your here's your small cap. Here's your large cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum are rising constantly, and these guys are just staying down there. So uh, just you buy this shit. You buy your large caps. That grows, and then... When this is starting, when this is ready to go, then you just take the money and, psh, okay, buy a whole bunch of this. See what I'm saying? Anyway, that's the plan. All right, and so far, so good. 
All right. All right, so let's proceed how we proceed, though. I know, I've been saying it for the past, I don't know, three, four shows, haven't I? But I just want to get that across, and I also want to just show you. Like, look, look what happened, right? Um, okay, so anyways, let's just continue how we you know, proceed. So look, look, top ten of the day, brothers. Look, look. Usual suspects. Top ten, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Chainlink, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Polkadot, and Cardano. Let's look at the total market moves of the day. Look, single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Oops, what's going on here? Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single, oh, he really single digits up, single digits down. No one even got in any double digits, huh? Single digits up. There's OMG Network got 8.21. I think that was like the highest one. Oh, that's down. Yeesh. Anyway, single digits up, single digits down, too. Single digits up, single digits down. All right, so if you see anything on here. Sorry, sorry. Let's look at the uh, top 10 losers. You see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on sale. Oh, dumbass. All right. Top 10 losers. Uh, Ocean Protocol, Near Protocol, OMG Network, Aragon, uh, Reserve Rights, REN, Band Protocol, Ampleforth, and Synthetics. Let's see who made money today. Top 10 gainers. Yeesh, yeah, not much gains. The market was pretty stagnant. All right, top 10 gainers. DeckCred, SushiSwap, Litecoin, Waves, Uniswap, Kusama, SwissBorg, Wrapped Bitcoin, Block Stack. Oh, and Bitcoin. All right. Let's see what the total market cap of days, brothers and sisters. Look, what are we working with? Uh, holy shit, for real? Sure doesn't look like that in the prices. All right. Well, uh, total market cap is four hundred sixty point. Sorry, sorry, four hundred sixty-two point zero billion dollars. When I left you yesterday, we were at uh, four hundred fifty billion dollars. So we've gone up uh, nine point six billion dollars. Well, I don't see where that where, where that came into play. I guess it's right. Like, look at we're already getting red. Anyway, whatever, man. Look. All right, let's look at the 24-hour volume. 24-hour volume is $121.4 billion. And when I left you yesterday, we were at $109.6 billion. So we've gone up. What's that? Uh, $12 billion. Let's just call it $12 billion and... Keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right. Bang. Let's check out the stories. What do we got working here? Oops. Bang. Yes. Cardano-based beef chain is tested on 1,600 calves in Wyoming. So, uh, basically, um, Cardano is basically doing you know, the same thing V Chain does, you know, uh you know, from farm to table, um watching the whole process of the food, and then you can call it up. Well, I don't know if it's 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 so friendly like that the consumer can use it, but anyway, it's the same thing, you know, the thing we always read about with V Chain, where, you know, they like the wine company, they the the grapes are on the blockchain and then they, they they tell you where it was stored and how cold it was and when they were picked and all this stuff like just all the details about your food right so from farm to table it says from here from rancher to retail so they're doing the same thing and what i like though is bong yes cardano starting to flex starting to do stuff now starting to do stuff and i told you i think cardano is going to be a big big thing here in america you know I mean, they're Americans, you know, uh, they know the terrain. Um, 
and the guys running it, uh, Hoskinson's a mathematician. The other guys are PhDs. I mean, super brains. And I have a story for you, which I've already been telling you about. But yeah, I have. A, don't worry. On Saturday, we're going to do this one. Even the CIA is talking about. Yeah, America's got to get blocked up. You're losing. We're losing. I'm going to read that on Saturday because I'm going to yap about that hard. <laughs> yeah, so pop yourself some wine and buckle yourselves in for that one. Right? It's a national security issue. It's a national security issue. When China's got everything on the blockchain, and we're sitting over here naked with our legacy systems, that little 14-year-old 14 14-year-olds 14 can hack. Oh, well. It's quite the... Uh, Strategic disadvantage, isn't it? All right, all right, but let's st stick with fuck. It's all right. Let's just stick with Cardano, though. So it's being tested on sixteen hundred calves in Wyoming. Let's check it out. All right. So, in a new article in the ADA forum. The Cardano Foundation has presented the Cardano blockchain-based solution, the Beef Chain. <laughs> As Elliot Hill writes in the article, reducing meat consumption is one of the easiest ways to combat climate change and protect the environment in the short term. However, a lesser known but equally important measure is to ensure that the meat comes from sustainable and responsible sources. This is the approach taken by the Beef Chain Project based in Wyoming which aims to create an effective traceability solution for the cattle industry using the Cardano blockchain. Right. So here we explore what the issues are in the current cattle industry, discuss how tracing our meat from field to fork can empower primary producers, and discover how the Cardano blockchain and beef chain are joining forces to make the beef supply chain more transparent. So according to Hill, there's a serious problem with fraud in the livestock and meat industry. Yeah. I told you about that. I told you about that here in South Beach. Well, not it didn't happen here in South Beach. It happened in Miami, which is across the water there. Yeah, some company got caught selling horse meat as beef. Yeesh. I mean, people eat horse in Kazakhstan and stuff, so horse meat is not some... You know, it's not going to kill you or anything, but just... It's not something I'd like to eat. But anyway, so it is a problem, right? It is a problem. Um, uh, where were we? Were we? Inferior, wait. According to Hill, there's a serious problem with fraud in the livestock and meat industry. Since the cost and prices of, for example, grass-fed beef and intensively famed and farmed beef vary considerably, there have been repeated cases in recent years of inferior meat being sold as high quality or of reference such as organic or grass meat being falsified at farm level. So you guys know there's grass fed beef and then there's all this hormone beef you eat. And so people are faking the hormone beef for grass, organic, you know, organic raised beef cows. So to prevent this fraud, the beef chain implements a rancher to retail approach where traceability starts at the level of the individual animal at a cattle breeder or farmer and can be traced through the entire supply chain to the end consumer. Oh, yeah. In concrete terms, the traceability solu solution enables unique animal identification to verify the origin of cattle and sheep. Look, look. Oh, doggone right. Want to know my beef is the beef that I really bought. All right. If you buy some beef like Kobe beef, it's a good type of beef. You buy some Kobe beef and you find out it was just grown over here in Georgia. Beef. All right. So, beef, chain, beef Chain's technology is already being tested on nearly 1,600 calves as part of a partnership with six, six family farms in Wyoming. The project uses RFID chips and Internet, <clears throat> and Internet of Things devices, IoT, to track and upload unique information about individual cattle to the blockchain. This allows verifiable proof of the origin of beef products to be provided via the blockchain. These references can then be easily tracked and verified throughout the supply chain, 
allowing consumers to easily scan a product in store and verify its origin all the way to the farm, ensuring ethical standards are met and eliminating the risk of buying fraudulent products. Right. So regarding Beef Chain's decision to use the Cardano ecosystem, oh, oh, my bad. I thought Beef Chain was made by Cardano. Beef Chain is a thing using Cardano. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> All right, so this is an onboarding for Cardano then. Obviously, I didn't read this story yet. But, um, <laughs> but okay, now I see what's happening. Beef Chain, they want to track meat, and they chose Cardano to be their blockchain to do it on. All right, so onboarding for Cardano, everybody. Bang, all right. So Beef Chain chose to work within the Cardano ecosystem, in part due to IOHK's close connections with Wyoming but also to leverage the Atala Track supply chain traceability solution built atop the Cardano blockchain. Oh, Atala Trace. Oh, not Track Trace. Atala Trace empowers product owners to improve the visibility of their supply chain, bringing transparency to the end user, rewarding primary producers who are committed to quality. Already into July of the virtual summit, IOHK already shared initial details of its partnership with Beef Chain. Okay, so back. So here's a video of the Beef Chain thing. Um, if you want to watch it, you guys know that I always put the links, I always put the URLs to each story that I read to you in the description of my videos. And so if you want to watch this video, come on here and bye. There you go. Food traceability. All right. So that's an onboarding. All right. My bad. I thought, I thought Cardano made it. All right. So Beef Chain has chosen Cardano to be their blockchain to do the traceability on. So onboarding for your Cardano hodlers. Bye. Good stuff, good stuff. And, uh, you know, that's the wave of the future. That's the wave of the future, right? And you notice that it was high-end products, right? It was high-end beef. So, let's get real. It looks like basically, you know, same with V-Chain and same with IOTA, right? They're all doing traceability on high-end products. And so, uh, I don't know, just going forward into the future, it looks like your high-end products are all going to be traceable and accountable. And then the low-end products, for the peasants, you might not know what you're getting. You know what I mean? Kind of like a two-tier system. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, whatever, man, though. Cut out hold lures. Bah! Let's move on. Boom, all right. Pakistan's securities uh, regulator Mull's new legal framework for crypto. Daggone right they are. About time, about daggone time. And as they say, you can see the byline right here. It says Pakistan wants to unlock a new era of digital finance with crypto. Yes. Wait, wait. Oh, speaking of, hold on. Speaking of crypto, hold on a second. Well, I know we're speaking of crypto. It's a crypto show, but hold on. What I mean is Iran is doing something with crypto. Hold on, hold on. I Just let me remember it. Fuck, Iran is doing something with Bitcoin right now. Shit, I just saw it today. Right? Because you know they're getting sanctioned. So, fuck, what are they doing? I think they're allowing you to buy their oil in Bitcoin. Not oil. I don't know if it's oil or not, though, because that's too big. Oil is too mega, right? Like, because oil is tracked around the world and shit, so they can't get around like that. Anyways, though... Um, Fuck. Anyway, okay, guys, I'll find out. I'll tell you tomorrow, man. I'll find out. I want to. I want to tell you now that I'm embarrassed that I brought it up. <laughs> I've got to clean that up tomorrow. But yeah. Anyway, so Pakistan, which is really pronounced Pakistan, and I will just call it Pakistan. You know, American type. And uh, yeah, so you know, I mean, so this is what we need. You know, every country to, you know, get their flipping crypto regs in order. To allow their citizens to come get this stuff. Look, look, so we can get rich. Bitch, man. Right? <laughs> and so uh now, as you can see from this, from the from the title here, they're only they're only mulling it. So I mean only thinking about it right now, but that's what it takes. It starts, you gotta start thinking. Once thinking happens, then actions happen later. <laughs> so let's be happy that they're beginning to mull. They're beginning to think about something, about this. And uh, <laughs> usually when you use the old noodle, 
actions happen after, right? All right. Once you turn the brain on a little bit, look, look, then some sort of action occurs. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Your head is not just for holding your hair, brothers and sisters. And so look, look. <laughs> Good. So the, so I guess, what, what are you saying, Shamari? So I guess what I'm saying is they're turning on the brains. All right. That's, that's it. All right, let me get a sip and then we'll proceed. All right, all right. Pakistan, finally. Tag gone, and I really wish I could tell you that Iran thing, man. Fuck. All right, anyway, let's move on. All right, all right. This is what we need in the whole world, and this is what Pakistan's doing. Pakistan's government is working on a framework for regulating cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But that's what we need worldwide. So the Security and Exchange Commission of Pakistan, or the SECP, has published a consultation paper on regulating digital assets. Issued on November 6th, the paper outlines major concepts for the growing digital finance market in Pakistan and examines the existing regulatory frameworks developed by other global jurisdictions. Bye! And so do you see that? And it examines examines the regulatory the existing the existing regulatory frameworks developed by other global jurisdictions back do you understand what that means <clears throat> so they're studying what are the europeans doing with this what are the americans doing with this hey, what is xi jinping and the chinese communist party doing with this well, i'm about to read to you a little bit about that in a second but you see what i'm saying and that's the truth. That is the truth. We talked about it last year a lot at the beginning of the year. Q1, Q2, I used to talk about it a lot. You know, all countries are going to come online. All countries in the world are going to be part of crypto. They're going it, to, it's like, just like my, my trading. I'm a Forex trader. Every country is part of Forex. If you have a currency, well, you're part of Forex, right? And so, and, and so every country in the world is going to be part of this. And, but they look to the big dogs. <clears throat> They look to see what are the big dogs doing in America, China, Europe. Let's get real. The UK also is a big financial, big mega financial player. Also Japan. Right? What are they doing, right? Um, and then, it, you know, and then they make their rules. You know, like I've always told you here in the uh, on this channel, right? It's a copycat world. Right. If the Americans do it this way, all right, let's just do it like the Americans, you know, like, fuck it. You know, like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just, all right, let's do it that way. Right. And uh, so. Wow, that's amazing that they are examining the already existing regulatory frameworks. So, for instance, our OCC said, hey, our banksters can now all custody crypto. Well, when the Pakistanis look at that. They're like, oh, okay, well, we'll let our banks all cuss it. You see what I'm saying? They just follow along. That's how the world really works. It's just, you know, America and Europe are sort of the leaders. China is sort of an alternate alt leader, if you kind of want to say it that way. You know, and everyone just follows along after that, right? All right. So that's why, that's why I always make such a big, humongous, mega deal about the OCC thing letting our banksters custody because the whole world saw that they're not fucking stupid they, they know what that means oh my gosh america just unleashed their banksters on this space well we're gonna unleash our banksters on this space too right it, once the king does it everyone does it you know what i mean like it, like uh like uh i don't know uh you know you know how things are. Once the the, the, the the popular person does something, they all do it. You know, Taylor Swift or whatever, right? She's like a singer here. And, you know, if she's wearing, you know, some sort of blah, blah, blah dress, well, all the little girls want to go buy that dress now and be like Taylor Swift, right? You know, copycat world. All right, so. All right, holy fuck. <laughs> We're only one sentence into the story. I've been yapping to you for a minute about this already. But it's important, it's important, and that's that's why I say it, and that's why you're smart to watch, because 
You guys know I get into the deep, into the deep information. Because it is deep. That's what makes you a successful investor. When you go deep. So look, the security exchange. Oh, we talked about that. Issued on November 6th, the paper outlines major concepts for the growing digital finance market in Pakistan and examines the existing regulatory frameworks developed by other global jurisdictions. Bah! So, in the document, the SECP emphasizes that digital assets are the start of a new era of digital finance. Look, look, so you see, but nobody is under any illusion anymore. This is it, this is it. CBDCs, stable coins, crypto. It is here to stay. Blockchain, it is here to stay. Sit, sit. You know, and so everyone's got to ramp up now. And like I just said, I mean, I'm going to repeat it again, but when motherfuckers around the world saw <laughs> that the OCC here in America bah, just gave every American bank carte blanche to custody, what does that tell you? That was the green light. That was the go-ahead around the world. That was the, you know, like they say about, was it World War One? You know, the shot hurled around the world. That was the shot heard around the world. Xi Jinping doing blockchain and all that. Everyone looks at it, but we still got to wait. When the Americans do it, bah, look, look, now it's game on. Everyone's like, all right, the Americans say, let's get real. Pretty much it was like the Americans gave it the thumbs up. Let's go, right? Um, and bang, bang, so here they come. So, according to the regulator, the new era of digital finance could only be possible by initiation of a new era that reinvents regulatory regime measures as they are known to the regulators. Oh, sorry, regular, sorry, regulators globally today. Exactly. Well, obviously, crypto is different than any other thing. Whoops. Shit. Sorry, guys. Uh. Got a little trigger happy on my mouse there. <laughs> a little trigger happy on the mouse pad there. Sorry. Okay, so look. <clears throat> um, where are we here? Come to the regulator. New era of digital finance. Could only be possible by initiation of a new era that reinvents regulatory regimes, measures, as they are known to the regulator. Oh, exactly. And so, and that's what we've been talking about here. We need new regulations. Right? Um, well, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not necessarily, but just you at least have to classify these, put these assets in their proper place. So, uh, like we've seen here. Well, all right. So, I'm going to tell you if I'm a regulator, if I was a dictator, and I was like, yeah, I would tell you how I would regulate crypto very easily. I've said this before, but let's just do it quickly. Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities. Because they're not owned by a company, right? There's no CEO of Bitcoin or CEO of Ethereum anymore. There's just, it's just there, right? Just people keeping them alive and running, right? And then, okay, so that's the first, that's kind of, let's look at that, that commodities up here. Then you've got the cryptocurrencies, Monero, Dash, Zcash, uh, and all that stablecoin shit, all that USDT, this DT, da, 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 da. Uh, that's that wannabe money stuff, cryptocurrency. They want to be money. They want to be currencies. Now, what I try to preach to you guys is to invest in and stuff is distributed ledger technology providers. Yes, that would generate revenue. That's the other part of this whole asset class called digital assets are the distributed ledger technology providers. That's your V-chains. That's your chain links. To the rescue. That's your flipping stellars. Uh, dang on it. Your singularity nets. Oh, yeah. Right? Those are distributed ledger technology services providers that provide services to industries and governments and organizations around the world. Uh, you know, providing efficiencies and... You know, I don't know, whatever, helping with your supply chains, your data flows, whatever, whatever. Or like to the rescue, bringing, bringing, your, bringing off-chain data on-chain, whatever. Those are real tech companies, right? So that's how I look at the, it's like a triangle, right? That's how I look at the crypto space. Commodities, Bitcoin and Ethereum, wannabe money, you know, uh, 
stable coins in Monero, Dash, all that kind of stuff, and then distributed ledger technology providers. Um, tech companies. Tech companies. All right. Why am I telling you that, though? Oh, oh, so the regulatory standards. Right, and so that's right. And so within this asset space, well, it's one asset class, but you might regulate them each differently, right? Like, And so like I've told you before, well, I mean, just so the Bitcoin and the Ethereum, you regulate them like gold, right? Or silver, it's it's just a commodity, right? Which is how America does it. So here in America, Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities uh, under SEC rulings, under SEC, you know, just under our, regula- our regulatory regime here. All this other stuff, the uh, your V chains, your iotas, your your Stellars, your your whatever man, Cardano, all of that, all that other stuff. Wait, wait, sorry. Let's go to the stable coin. So there's wanna, and then so there's there's the the commodities, and then there's the wannabe money stuff. Yeah, well, they're going to be regulated as currencies. So it's not a sovereign currency. In other words, sovereign means issued by a state, you know, by a government. These aren't sovereign currencies. These are privately issued currencies. So that'll be that. And then distributed ledger technology provided, which I believe these will be regulated as stocks, right? When I buy a V chain, I just view it as a stock. That's it. I'm buying a stock in V chain. And those VTHOs that I get every, I don't know, what is it? Every five days they give them out or something. I don't know how what it is. That's just a dividend. That's no different than buying Microsoft share. And every quarter, you get the quarterly Microsoft dividends. No different. No different. You know, your IOTAs, no different. You're buying a share in IOTA. You're, you're flipping Cardano's. You're all of it. All the any of these other ones. Your chain links, your, 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 your Tezos, all of that. Those are uh, just stocks in a company. <clears throat> Holy fuck. I, I, I really went as far there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, uh, wow. All right, but you get it, right? All right, let's move on. So the SECP, no, <laughs> holy smokes. To say the truth, I don't even remember what the fucking full, what the point of what I started saying that was for. Oh, because the regulatory measures they're looking at globally, right? And so, um, and then I got into my own regulatory crap. So, but you know, people are just going to copy America probably and Europe. Let's get real, and which is great, which is great. All right, all right, let's move on, man. I'm losing myself so the secp noted that the consultation paper focuses exclusively on private crypto assets and does not include remarks on a central bank digital currency or a cbdc so privately issued money uh distinguishing several types of digital assets the secp pays particular attention to security tokens and utility tokens right and that's what's good about this you know security tokens are security a stock uh, that's your V chain and all that. According to the regulator, one of the key advantages of security tokens is the ability to fractionalize each asset, which enables benefits like lowering barriers for investment by retail investors. Exactly. Bye. You know, if just imagine it's never going to happen. What I'm about to say is never going to happen. OK, but I'm just going to say it just to make a point. Your V chain, right? It's a security, a stock, I think. And, you know, what What they're saying here is that they like the security tokens. Well, they're saying a key advantage of the security tokens is that people can buy a fractional amount of each asset. right? In other words, you don't have to buy the whole thing. For instance, right now, like I showed you guys last week, right? Okay, let's use that as an example. Fuck it. Last week, I bought the fucking a half of a half of Bitcoin, right? You don't have to buy the whole thing. You can buy, right? There it is. Oh, that's a perfect example. A fractional amount, right? Like like uh, uh, like Slappy and, and DP Entertainment, right? They bought. Well, I don't know. They didn't say how much they bought, but I'm assuming <laughs> it wasn't a whole one. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, the point being is, I did it in a fractional way. I bought. A grand worth, I think it was 0.6 
one five three blah 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 or something bullshit like this, right? Fractional, and so they like it because it lowers the barrier, right? It lowers the barrier for what for retail investors. So for the regular guy, for the regular guy, you know, like imagine if you only could buy a Bitcoin at the exact price it is, right? Like where are we here? Let me look. Right? Imagine you had to buy Bitcoin at what? What is it? Oh, I have it written on the fucking paper. Hold on. <laughs> so, I forgot I had it on the paper. All right. Imagine you had to buy it for the $16,253. Yeah, well, that's priced out everybody. Well, 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 not everybody. I mean, but the average person, let's get real. You probably don't have 16 Gs to put into something, right? You know, uh, stuff like that. And so that's what makes it beneficial to... You know, that's what it says, lowering the barrier for retail investment. And so just like I showed you um, on last week, I bought the half Bitcoin. Yeah, well, that's already made me. I'm already up 600, right? I'm around there or something like that. Um, yeah, and if you don't want to buy a half, yeah, I'll buy a quarter of one. And you'd be up $300 right now. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, so that's good. In other words, I can, so what I guess what I'm trying to say, well, I'm trying to encourage you to buy some Bitcoin, damn it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm trying to encourage you guys because the Bitcoins are going to rise faster first. And then you take that fucking Bitcoin and then you can buy these small caps later. <laughs> yes. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to manipulate you to buy some Bitcoin, on. But, you know, <laughs> obviously. Because it's going to be good for you. And uh, all right, let's move on. Right? But you don't have to buy the whole thing. You can buy. Right? You can fractionalize your purchases. Right? You don't have to be a big baller all the time. Just do what you can do. Do what you can do. All right. And so finally, I guess what I'm saying there is that obviously the Pakistanis get it. Then they think it's good for their investors which it is good for the investors. All right, so other advantages include transparency, improved liquidity, improved clearing and settlement mechanisms, and more automation tools, the paper reads. Yeah, sure, sure. Usual blockchain stuff. So the SECP, hold on. Hey, guys. I mean, like I said, I, this isn't financial advice. I don't tell people what to do with their money, but I give my opinion. Getting those large caps, getting Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. Now that we've found out that the that the corporations are starting to hold Bitcoin as a reserve currency, well, fuck. All right, that changes. That changes. You know, <clears throat> I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought Bitcoin was going to fly once the funds came and everything to take it off the market. Scarcity. Yeah, well, apparently they decided to create a little more... They decided to create some scarcity a little sooner. <laughs> so lucky us. Lucky us, man. That's uh that we got a bonus. Oh, oh believe me. When Fidelity when Fidelity all on. When Fidelity comes in here and starts gobbling up Bitcoin and everything for their for their for their uh for their funds, it's gonna be amazing. But I never thought these little companies would come in and start gobbling up just a hodl. And that's a bonus for us. So it changes the calculation, right? It changes the calculation. It turns your Bitcoin into, you know, uh, like... I don't know how to say it. I don't know what the word is, guys, but just it turns that Bitcoin into. Anyway, I just I've said it before. and I'm going to say it last one last time. I know I harped on it. If you got eight grand in your bank account, it just stays eight grand. If you put eight grand in Bitcoin, well, it grows. <laughs> right, my 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 eight grand that I had in there last week is now eight thousand six hundred. There you go. It's simple math. So look, look, the SEC people continue to engage with market players. I'm really trying to encourage you guys to get large caps. And like I said, fractionalize. You don't have to get a whole one. All right, all right, all right, enough, enough. The SEC people continue to engage with market players. 
and welcome industry feedback in developing a regulatory framework for crypto. Pakistan has been slow to adopt new frameworks for digital money and cryptocurrencies. Last year, the country was planning to introduce new digital currency regulations for electronic money institutions. We read about that. That never fucking happened. <laughs> In April 2019, uh, Pakistan uh, Central Bank announced plans to issue a CBDC by 2025. All right, so there we go. Banks, there it is. So there it is. Pakistan uh, mulling, thinking about meaning they're going to do, because they don't want to be left behind, no com no country. I'll show you. Don't worry. I got a nice article on Saturday, man. Bah! No country wants to be left behind. And uh, so here it comes. All right, let's move on. Bah! One of China's biggest banks, look, look, is allowing investors to buy bonds with Bitcoin. Bah! Now. What do you give? What does that mean? Who gives a fuck about bonds? Look, look, dickhead. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> look, fuck stick. Let's get real. Banks in China uh, are controlled by the Communist Party of China. You don't get to offer fucking bonds with Bitcoin unless you have the blessing of the CCP, the Communist Party. Wow, well, oh, sorry, the Chinese Communist Party. And and so what does this tell you? Well, the Communist Party of China doesn't give you authorization to do stuff unless it has authorization from the head motherfucker. Xi Jinping. <laughs> right? That's how it rolls over there. I've taught you about China. Capital does not control the state. If you're listening to me right now, you're listening to me from some English-speaking country. Capital controls your state. In other words, money, capital equals money. Money controls your country to a certain degree. Here in America, it's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. It's all about the dead presidents. Look, look, it's all about that moolah. It's all about that skrilla. It's all about that bread. That's what controls your politicians. Not you guys in Europe so much, but here in America, you dag on well now. And, uh, well, it's the exact opposite <laughs> in China. Money doesn't control the Communist Party of China. The Communist Party of China controls the capital, controls the money. Yeah, if you make billions of dollars in, in China, yeah, well, you're lucky. Yeah, because the Communist Party lets you make that money, motherfucker. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they let you. They don't, they don't play around like that, right? If you're in a Western nation, capital controls the state. In China, the state controls capital. And so why I bring that up is that if the state is allowing this bank here to sell bonds for Bitcoin, what does that show you? They're, they're beginning to allow Bitcoin usage. Remember, in 2018, Bitcoin and all of these were banned in China. Banned. Everyone had to go to VPNs and all this kind of weird stuff just to get their crypto, right? This is a state government bank. And now it's actually accepting Bitcoin as a payment? Oh, yeah. That is some good news. Good news. A great news for all of us. Right? You get it, right? In other words, the Chinese government has, at least for this one bank, has given the blessing, you can accept Bitcoin. You understand? Um, and they're not going to just do it for this one bank. I mean, obviously, if you're going to allow one bank to do it, you're probably going to allow multiple banks. Well, obviously, fuck, man. You're not going to just allow one bank in your country to do something and no one else. It's unfair, really. Well, I mean, it's the Chinese, it's the Communist Party. They can do what they want. But I mean, just, it wouldn't happen like that. It doesn't work like that. And so... Um. Uh, this is great news, man. This is great, great news. All right. Let me get a sip. So I guess I I guess so. Finally, I guess so. What you what do you mean, motherfucker? So I guess what I'm trying to say is, 
uh, the Chinese Communist Party has, that's it. This is, le- Bitcoin is legit. Bitcoin is legit. There you go. I use an American term. It's legit. <laughs> it's legit. All right. So let's check it out. Boy. China Construction Bank, one of the country's big four financial players. So obviously this is the, one of the top four banks in all of China. You know how that rolls. Those are straight up owned by the Communist Party of China. Wow. They can call them uh, SOEs, right? State-owned enterprises, right? This is obviously an SOE bank, <laughs> state-owned enterprise. Anyways, uh, obviously run by the Communist Party of China. All right. Oh, you guys got to check out China, baby. You learn a lot. Anyways, the China Construction Bank, CCB, one of the country's big four financial players, is planning to raise up to $3 billion from a sale of bonds that individuals and institutions can trade in and out of using Bitcoin and the U.S. dollar. Bye! Financial publication... The Wall Street Journal reported on Wednesday. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, But you play with it with Bitcoin and dollars. Okay. Here's a little tweet about it. Blue, 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 blue. So the move comes amidst greater interest in the Bitcoin space by seasoned investors and tech entrepreneurs, such as hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones and MicroStrategy CEO. Michael Saylor, in the past few months, as global certainty and inflation seem imminent. There's no inflation imminent. Settle down. Chinese banks, Bitcoin play. So CCB, which also holds the distinction of of being the world's second largest bank. So this is the second largest bank on earth. Is selling a cheap digital bond that buyers can invest in as little as $100 in. Oh. The security would roll over every three months and pay annualized interest of LIBOR plus 50 basis points or approximately 0.75, noted the Wall Street Journal. So you buy this bond, you're going to get 0.75% back. Uh, wait, every three months. Oh, Oh, sorry, annualized every year. All right, so... For legality purposes, the bonds will be issued and arranged via a CCB branch in Labuan County in Malaysia. The small town serves as a tax haven for Southeast Asian businesses, owing to its favorable regulations and policies. The digital bond will be listed on the Fushan Exchange, a bourse that also facilitates the trading of cryptocurrencies. It also accepts Bitcoin as a form of payment for all purchases, which are then converted to U.S. dollars instantly. Felix Fanke, uh, chief executive of Chinese construction bank's onshore Malaysia business and principal officer of its offshore Labuan branch, said in a statement, the bond is the first publicly listed debt security on a blockchain. Proceeds from it would be deposited at the branch of the Chinese state-owned lender. So, Henry Chong, Fusang CEO, noted, the bond is essentially like a three-month fixed deposit product that pays holders much more than most U.S. dollar bank deposit rates. The, security, the securities can be purchased by investors all over the world. Oh, so you can buy this. Hold on, let me read this. The securities can be purchased by investors all over the world with the exception of, oh, the exception of, tax residents of the U.S. and China, and people in Iran and North Korea. Ah, so Chinese citizens aren't going to get to buy this. Okay. Anyways, Stephen Wong, the chief operating and financial strategist for CCB Malaysia, added that the business wasn't breaching any laws by taking Bitcoin payments or taking bank deposits, which is our core business, he said. Wong added 
that the bank considered the issuance of the bonds <clears throat> as both a pilot project and an innovative offering. However, he also cautioned against rumors. The bank is not dealing in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So he's tr trying to tell everyone. We're not dealing in cryptocurrencies or anything. But we'll take those money for those bonds. But we'll take that Bitcoin for those bonds. <laughs> the offering started on Wednesday. And trading of the new digital security will begin on Friday. So, bang. So there you go. Uh, one of China's biggest banks, one of the big four, is offering, to, uh, is selling bonds. Uh, which can be purchased with Bitcoin. So that is another, uh, you know, just more evidence of the banking world moving into this space. You know, the banking world moving into space. And once the banking world is here, well, people feel safe. Hedge fund managers feel safe. Institutionals feel safe. You know, they, it's their people, you know, it's their people doing it. And so, bang, great, great news for... Crypto, great news for the multiverse. Let's move on. Bye. What we got? Luke, Luke, L Downs, Lorna, love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. We got Bitcoin Kong. Wow. <laughs> love you, Kong. See you, Kong. Bye. What's he talking about? Piggy Wiggy. Look, look, Piggy Wiggy. Boom. Grab that chicken. Look, look, Cardano beef chain tested in Wyoming. Boom. Pakistan mulling legal crypto framework. Boom. Chinese bank sells bonds for Bitcoin. Look, look. Boom. And Shamari's talking. So look, look. Selling that chicken. Boom. Actually, not selling anything. Giving out chicken. Look, look, piggy wiggy. Bang. All right. Just having a little piggy wiggy for a few days. All right. Let's see what we got here. All manner of miscreants around these parts. Look, look, beautiful brawlies. <laughs> Love you, brawlies. See you, brawlies. Bye. Still waiting. Look, look, stop him in five sack. Hold down the north. Hold down the dag on north. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. What was this? Kim Z. All about crypto. XRM, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Look, look. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Good choice. Bam. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Edward Dicko and the Dicko family. Look. How many cryptos together stays together? Yes. Bye. Oh, look at this son of a bitch right here. Son of a bitch. Look. Bye. 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 Got you wrong, Kaz. Son of a bitch. Let me see, brother. Node master. Bye. I'm bleeding. Look, look. I'm bleeding. <laughs> All right. Not tonight. Not tonight. Should we? All right, not tonight, not tonight. Michelle, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. All right, not tonight. Deep in and so brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. No forex tonight. Uh, the trade I was in, I got stopped out on. So, and I'm just, I'm not trading anything the rest of the week. So, bang. Don't worry, when it starts heating up again, I'll get back to you. Andrew Pacheta, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Sunny B, spy lady. Yes, got your fucking circles UBI. Got your UBI. Good, 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 lady. Good, good, spy lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bye. <clears throat> good stuff. Everyone go get the circles UBI. Radster, yes, holding down the, our brother from Prague, holding down the European insurgency. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yes. All right, well, that's most of them. That's a good enough right there. Justin DeLavina, hey, brother. Haven't seen you for a little minute. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. That's good enough. Whoops. What? Marijuana isn't ready. What? Isn't nearly as controversial as it once was. Marijuana isn't controversial at all. Fuck. Fucking parents are giving it to their 10-year-old kids to fucking calm them down. Look, that's how you got to do it. Ah, uh, the little the little twelve year old. What, uh, the, what do you call these kids? The toddlers, right? Two years, three years. Fucking right. Give them a fucking weed drink. Just calm that little fuck stick down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Obviously, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. I would never be a father like that. Are you joking? <laughs> all right, all right. Let me calm down. I don't want people to think I'm an asshole. <laughs> you give your you give your kids weed just to fucking shut them up. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I give him a little few. All right, all right, enough, enough. All right, enough. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding, obviously. I wouldn't abuse a child like that. Uh, all right, CB News. What, Binium? CB News, Visa rolls out FinTech Partner Connect program. All right, well, good for them. Oh, that's enough, man. That was enough miscreants. Hold on. Is there one down here? Benjamin, what is he talking about? Anderson Horowitz backed deal launches crypto payroll tool. All right, man. Fuck all that. Luck, luck, man. Fuck, luck, 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 luck. Bye. There we go. Let's get back to the Death Star. Look, so we had a great show for you today. So, Cardano's beef chain. Holy. Why are my cigarettes going out like this? All right, Cardano's beef chain tested in in Wyoming, and so awesome on many levels. First of all, oh, well, well, and so I should say this. Uh, I wrote Cardano's beef chain. My bad. It's not Cardano's beef chain. It's beef chain has chosen Cardano uh, to be run on the bottom. That's great. That's great. Like I said, uh, I think Cardano is going to be, you know, sort of, you know America's flagship blockchain, right? Like in in V in V Chain is sort of China's flagship blockchain, right? Xi Jinping is out there promoting it. The Communist Party is promoting it. Uh, you know what I mean? It's got you know status. And then like IOTA, IOTA is you know the sort of the European flagship blockchain. The European Union is. Oh, let me put this cigarette out. This is, the European Union has uh, is using it for the mining. Uh, well, for all their mining, smart cities. We read about two smart cities, and now they're expanding out to five more. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff with IOTA, and then I, I'm, I'm hoping. This is all hopium, but I'm hoping that sort of Cardano becomes America's. I know I'm chain smoking. Um, I hope that Cardano becomes America's sort of flagship blockchain, right? Like, I, I, I've never really mentioned that, but IOTA and VeChain, that's what they seem like. They're like flagship blockchains, right? Um, I know VeChain does work around the world in, in Europe and in Australia and shit like this, but you know, it's Asian based. You know what I mean? It's Asia. And IOTA, you know, it's it's uh you know, it's very Eurocentric. Everything that they're doing there is Eurocentric, it seems like. And so I hope that Cardano lives up to what I'm hoping they will be, sort of the American blockchain. You kinda wanna look at it like that. And anyway, but so but anyway, this is a this is a, so now if you're a Cardano hodler. This is an onboarding for Cardano. Beef Chain uh, has chosen Cardano uh, to be their provider to you know watch the beef from from baby cow to your plate. <laughs> yeah. Good old steak. Like me some beef ribs too. Good old beef ribs. You know, and so that's great. So Cardano hodlers, bah, and then Pakistan. Pakistan, these fucksticks say it here, are all mulling legal crypto framework. And so that's what's necessary. That's what's necessary. Uh, every country has to come online. And so in the world, in the world, I don't give a fuck if you're a third world fucking country with a bunch of jihadis running around. Still got to come online. And uh, um, um, <laughs> um, um, uh, so... Yeah, that's just great. And, you know, what I liked about that article really was, you know, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're looking at what other countries did, America, Europe, the UK, and China, and just going to copy. And so, um, great for crypto, great for the multiverse. All right. Bye. And then finally, Chinese bank sells bonds for Bitcoin. So, uh, this is one of, of China's top four banks. You know, so this is like... Uh, 
you know, the J.P. Morgan or the Charles Schwab, the Citibank of China, you know, uh, doing this. And um, um, it shows the banking sector, you know, like, like Bitcoin is so real, we'll even accept it for payment, right? It said they're going to sell them right away, so let's get real. We have to get real, right? But it shows that they really see that um, um, you know, just that Bitcoin is fucking, it's a viable asset, uh, sorry, not asset class, forget the asset class word, uh, means of transferring value right it's a means of transferring value and we've got these bonds it costs this much value we will accept that value in the form of bitcoin and so you know honestly i think the stable coin thing is going to be a big thing with the banking sector now i do now you know i i used to tell you guys i thought i thought stable coins are just going to be a bunch of bullshit but yeah they're going to be a real deal and uh you know things like this where a bank is now a mega bank. Like, this is a mega bank. Hey, remember that. I want you to remember this. This isn't some shitty little Chinese bank in, you know, Xinhuan province or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, no, this is one of their top four. Like, this is like the Charles Schwab, the JP Morgan of their fucking country, you know? And uh, they're saying, we'll take your dang on Bitcoin, fuckstick. Bring it on. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. Bang is, I guess, what I have to say about it. So look, look. Chinese bond hodlers. <laughs> Bitcoin hodlers. Bang. Go get your Chinese bonds. Actually, getting Chinese bonds probably wouldn't be so bad. You know? All right. So that's good enough. That's good enough. Look, look. Let's chill and kill it. Bang. Let's get back to your wives and lives. So subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. Greatest show on earth. Greatest show. In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. <clears throat> Love talking money. Bye. Love talking crypto. <laughs> Favorite time of my day. So look, thanks for having me in your home. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow for a fact filled, fun filled, crypto filled day of crypto ness. Bye. <laughs> but until then, subscribe here. Boom. Press that little bell and you'll get an automatic notification. So every time I come on, oh, wow. your phone, it'll alert you when the greatness has arrived. When the multiverse has come upon you. Look! So subscribe here. Press the bell. Watch that video there. Bang! Greatest in the multiverse. <laughs> and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Look, look! <laughs> I love you guys. My name is Shamar Clark, and I'm always on duty. Bang! Yes! Till tomorrow. Over and out.